Last season, the Las Vegas Raiders had a very interesting battle at the right tackle position. Uh, with that battle, they had three guys really competing. It was Brandon Parker, Jermaine Illuminor, and rookie Thayer Munford. And Brandon Parker ended up winning that job, but Parker went down early on in the, uh, in the season last season. And from the point he went down, the Raiders started rotating right tackles. Uh, they started rotating in Thayer Munford, the rookie, and Jermaine Illuminor, the veteran. And that lasted about seven to eight weeks up until Jermaine Illuminor ran away with the job. And at that point, we thought Jermaine Illuminor was it. And coming into this year, everyone just assumed Illuminor would be the guy for the Raiders at the right tackle position. But during fully padded practice today, as well as the last couple of days, there's been a shift at that right tackle position. There, Munford, uh, according to reports, is looking very good at camp and he may end up starting for the Raiders at right tackle. In fact, people are saying that their Munford right now is pushing for that starting position. He's taking most reps, although Illuminor and Parker are still taking some reps, but Munford is now taking noticeably more reps than Jermaine Illuminor. Logan Reaver, who was at camp, said their Munford is continuing the push to get the starting right tackle job, getting the majority of reps with the ones while Jermaine Illuminor gets work with the twos again today. A lot of people are going to be surprised when this battle really comes down to it. Uh, based off of Thayer Munford's take from last season, I didn't think he would end up starting this season. But he has to have taken that year to a leap. Like, he has to look a lot better this year for him to potentially start for the Raiders at the right tackle position. There's probably no one I'm more excited to watch than uh, Thayer Munford in the preseason games. Uh, you know, I think Jermaine Illuminor is a really good right tackle, but obviously he does have certain flaws at that position, which um, in my opinion is, is that he's built more so of a guard, right? From a body construction uh, perspective, right? He's, you know, he's not 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, uh, he's a little bit shorter than that. Plus, you know, when it comes to actually being able to take on guys that maybe are stronger at that defensive end position, he struggles a little bit, right? We've seen him kind of get bore rushed a little bit, but those are things you can improve on, right? Those are definitely things. And he was really only a right tackle for the first year last season. But apparently, Thayer Munford is looking good this season. So I'm very excited to kind of see how the battle kind of continues over camp. I don't think Thayer Munford has won the job yet, but he may be the front runner. Uh, there's also a chance that Jermaine Illuminor could be the swing tackle and Brandon Parker ultimately gets cut. We'll see what ends up happening. Anything's kind of possible at this point. But do note, and it is important to note, last season Brandon Parker ended up winning the job, right? So this season, it's going to be interesting to see if, if he's the number two guy and maybe Illuminor kicks into right guard. Because I think a lot of people also think Jermaine Illuminor may be the Raiders' best right guard option. Right? I think some people actually think that. And I wouldn't, and I don't necessarily disagree. I think Illuminor if he played right guard, would be our best right guard option, right? It'd be between him uh, as well as Natain Moody, right? It'd be one of those two guys. Um, but that also, you know, kind of comes to the point that, you know, right guards are much easier to find than, than than our tackles, right? Tackles really have to play out in space. Guards kind of don't, right? Guards get to their guy quicker because you're on the inside as opposed to the outside, and it's going to just be a very, very interesting battle. Now, we got other updates from camp today that I kind of want to get into. Really, really interesting updates. Uh, you know, the Raiders are at this point fully invested in camp. Uh, guys are hitting each other and those type of things. Um, but what's happening in camp right now, some people are, are kind of concerned with. And that is that the defense is absolutely dominating. Tishon Reed said this. He said, uh, first and foremost, I got to give the defense the credit, first and foremost, Jimmy Garoppolo has been holding the ball too long and making some poor decisions, for sure. But they still have to cover well and make plays. Additionally, the defensive line has consistently had the advantage over the offensive line. That's interesting, right, if you think about it. Because right now what we're hearing is that the Raiders' defense is beating up on the offense. Yes, Jimmy G doesn't look comfortable back there. And part of that could be the Raiders' defensive line is absolutely crushing the offensive line. You know, Max Crosby... It's kind of a cheat code out there, right? Let's just be honest. A guy that gives that type of effort with that type of hand-to-hand -hand combat a technique, right? Uh, that type of player that Crosby is, you know, if you have a right tackle battle, guys, you're kind of rotating in, you're not really sure. It's kind of unfair, right? Max Crosby's going to crush those guys. Now, if Max Crosby went up against Colton Miller, that's completely different. 
right? But Max Crosby does not play the side over the left tackle. He plays the side over the right tackle. And in this instance, it seems like he's absolutely crushing it and he's causing a lot of disruption and he's basically unblockable. And that is leading to the Raiders defense kind of struggling. Or I'm sorry, the offense kind of struggling a little bit and the defense kind of taking advantage. What's interesting about this report is that apparently Jimmy Grapple's throwing some interceptions. Um, apparently, um, the Raiders' offense looked good to start practice, but tapered off towards the end. And three interceptions for Jimmy G today. Three of them. That's insane. I uh, Jimmy Garoppolo threw three interceptions. One went to Amik Robertson. One went to Trayvon Merrigan. One went to uh, Marcus Peters. Now, the Trayvon Merrigan interception came during 11-on-11 11 11 fully padded practice. That's the interception that really, really counts, right? The 7-on-7 seven seven stuff doesn't really count, right? What really counts is the stuff in 11-on-11. 11 11. Um, but the defense is continuing its dominance. And I think a part of it is, is because the defensive line probably looks good. And what's crazy about the defensive line looking good is we don't even have Tyree Wilson right now, right? Tyree Wilson could ultimately be the Raiders' best defensive lineman come two or three years down the line, right? And I'm not knocking Max. I think Max is a great player, or, or, you know, top four or five defense lineman. But Tyree Wilson was drafted to be a top two or three guy in the league, right? That's why you draft him with the seventh overall pick. So there's no reason why he should not be able to develop into that guy, right? So I'm really excited to watch Tyree Wilson as he kind of gets healthy. Uh, there are some reports of him that he is working off to the sideline, which means he's getting close to being ready to go. So uh, I really look forward to Tyree Wilson returning. The hope is that, you know, come week three of the preseason, he can play that entire game, right, before the, the regular season starts. Um, he's kind of trained, ready to go for that game. And that's the one game he gets to fully play to really prepare himself for the NFL. Um, but yeah, the Raiders defense is looking good and we don't even have, you know, a guy that was the seventh overall pick. So I think the upside for the defense is still massive, right? Um, Jacarian Bennett has also been doing well. Uh, according to Sean Reed, he had a nice pass breakup matched up against Devontae Adams in 11 on 11. I mean, that one's important, right? Again, 11 on 11s is when it matters. It does not matter when it's seven on sevens. And there's, there's still some of this, right? I, I should say that with, with putting this disclaimer in there, right? Yes, it's nice that the defense is doing well, but you guys got to also understand that when Jimmy Garoppolo is out there, you know, they're not running their offense to win, right? They're running their offense to, to test new little schemes and new little tricks here or there, right? For example, if, they perfected, let's say, a, a, a deep dig concept with the slot going deep, Adams coming across the middle. If they've already done that and they're doing it really, really well consistently, they're not going to continue running that, right? Because they know they have it. They're going to now test a new concept. You know, rather it's a dragon concept, rather it's a scissors concept. They're going to test new things, right? Things that they may not have done, things that may not work as well, things that they kind of maybe installed the day before, uh, maybe earlier on in camp, you know, they drew it up and they want to kind of test it. That's the point of training camp, right? But also keep this in mind. When you're having a good training camp on the defense side, sometimes that kind of carries on into the regular season. And for me, that's what I'm really excited to watch as we kind of continue, right? I'm really excited to watch if the Raiders defense can kind of continue going forward. Uh, some people are saying Ja'Carri and Bennett is the real deal, right? And I know some people are going to say, well, it's training camp. We'll see when they, you know, play the Niners, when the regular season comes around. And that is true. But remember, we heard reports about Nate Hobbs early on, and that ended up being fact. So the hope is, is that Bennett is the next Nate Hobbs, right? And that'd be perfect for the Las Vegas Raiders and kind of where they're headed. Uh, let's let's talk a little bit about uh, some other offensive linemen. Uh, McClendon Curtis, uh, the UDFA, is apparently looking good in one-on-one -on -one blocking drills, and uh, Crosby and Chandler Jones also kind of stood out. Um, this is this is kind of what you want, right? You want your offensive linemen to stand out. You know, one-on-one -on -one drills favor defensive linemen, right? Because in a real-life scenario, there's multiple things that kind of happen, right? First and foremost, an offensive line could slide right. And in that instance, the center guard may end up double teaming towards like a three tech or whatever it could be, right? Um, in a one-on-one -on -one drill, there's no slides. So a guy knows that I'm only going to go up against this one guy. In a real life scenario, because of those slides, the defensive tackle has to keep in mind, hey, so, you know, I could get hit from the right. I may get hit from the left, right? I may get double teamed. Uh, I may get chipped as well if you're a defensive end. So one-on-ones always favor defensive players, but McClendon Curtis is looking good right now. And we've you know, we, we kind of know what, what to expect out of him. 
Uh, I think for him, the big thing is going to be to d- d- develop, right? The speed of the game needs to kind of slow down. And I think the the potential with, with Curtis is through the roof. You know, Curtis didn't get drafted, not because he, he doesn't have it in his game. It's because Curtis did not play at Alabama or at Ohio State, right? So there's not a lot of tape of him taking on top tier guys. Uh, he played at Chattanooga, right? They don't play anyone, anyone good. You can't even get all 22 tape that looks good from Chattanooga, right? Trust me. I've seen it. It looks kind of ugly, but McClendon Curtis is looking good. And that's one of the guys that I'm very excited for. In fact, he was one of my guys, right? I have a list of guys that I really like. And Curtis was one of those guys pre-draft. So I expect big things out of him. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up making the roster over some of the veteran guys we may have. We'll see as it kind of develops, as, as actual camp kind of comes. Uh, we got two final updates. These kind of come from the presser. Marcus Peters said something very interesting. He said that his dad was never able to wear his jersey before because he is a Raiders fan, but now he can. That's, that's kind of interesting right there. Um, I know a lot of people agree with with, with uh, Marcus Peters' dad, right? The fact that he never wore any of his, his, his uniforms or outfits because it was, you know, the Chiefs, the Rams. Uh, or whatever other team he's played for, right? But now, for the first time, the guy can finally wear a Raiders jersey that sees Peters on the back. Um, that's interesting, man. Shout, shout out to, to Marcus Peters' father for that one, man. That's that's insane. Because I know a lot of people out there, if, if your kid made the NFL, you're going to support your kid. But uh, Marcus Peters' dad, man, it's kind of interesting. Uh, finally, final update here. Uh, I, I kind of want to just, just talk a little bit about Zamir White, you know, uh, looking at him in the presser, right. As he's kind of out there talking, he looks massive. He, he looks very, very fit. He looks very, very strong. And, you know, today it was fully 11 on 11 practice. And the reports coming out of camp is that Zamir White looks really, really, really good. Uh, Zamir White apparently has came in and the Raiders offensive line in the run game is continuing to do a good job. Right. And apparently Zamir White is having a great camp so far. And that's the report I want to hear. Right. So many Raider fans are, you know, they're Josh Jacobs fans. Let's just be honest. There's nothing wrong with that. You can absolutely be a Josh Jacobs fan. The guy's been a beast for the Raiders, but the Raiders may not pay Josh Jacobs. Right. We even heard a report earlier today that if Josh Jacobs, you know, if the Raiders rescind that offer of Josh Jacobs, if Jacobs wants to, he can go and sign with a team like the Chiefs, right? He's not going to get $11 million, obviously, but for one season, he may get like four or five million. Plus, he'll have a chance to win a Super Bowl. And Josh Jacobs is the caliber of player that could definitely help a team win a Super Bowl, especially that type of team, right? Now, my point in saying that is, is if Josh Jacobs does truly get traded or the Raiders just let him walk, we're going to need a running back to really replace that production that uh, Josh Jacobs had. And I think Zamir White could do that, right? Zamir White, I think, is one of those guys that can come in and have success. And I'm saying it. I think he can replace Josh Jacobs, right? Uh, Based off his tape from last year, I think if he just improved on certain parts of his game, uh, if the game slows down with our scheme, I think he will have success. You know, I think people look at Josh Jacobs and think, oh, he's a 16, 1700 yard running back, but he only did that once in the Josh McDaniel scheme, right? So don't think it was all Josh Jacobs that had that, that massive season. The scheme matters. And in this instance, I think Josh McDaniels did a really good job. And coming into this year, it's going to be even more fluid. It's going to be a little bit better because you got pretty much four to five of the same offensive linemen coming back. Miller, Parham, James, three guys for sure. And it may be Alex Bars, and maybe Thayer Munford, and maybe Jermaine Illuminor. And those guys are basically guys as well from last year. So you may have four or five guys coming back from last year. So things are going to be more fluid on the offensive line. And I think uh, Zamir White looks really, really good. He looks fit as hell. Um, and the reports are also that he's having his way, right? He's definitely having his way in camp. I'm very, very excited for the Raiders this season. Uh, the battles are underway. The guys are coming back, and some guys are kind of looking good and impressing. Uh, Marcus Peters is is doing what what we expected out of him, right? Uh, if Peters could have a Pro Bowl like season, right? I think back like a guy like Casey Hayward when he came here to the Raiders had a really, really good season. If Marcus Peters can have one of those type of years, the defense could finish in the top twenty, right? There's no reason why a guy like Max Crosby and Chandler Jones can't have you know, seven sacks to 14 sacks, right? Or somewhere in between with each of those two guys. 
Tyree Wilson gets some pressure. Below Nichols was once regarded a top 12 defensive tackle right before he came to the Raiders. If he can get back to, to what he's done in the past, um, then that doesn't include the, the year two guys, right? The, the rookie Byron Young as well. So I think this Raiders defense has a lot of upside. It's going to start with that defensive line. It'll hit the linebackers. And then in the back end, if Marcus Peters does what Peters has done in the past, the potential is through the roof for the Raiders. So let me know what you guys think, man. Comment below. What do you guys think about the, the Raiders so far? Uh, thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.